Being an inventor means knowing how to use the tools at hand to make something great, or to bring it down. PNLR. Hello everyone, my name is Josh from Elder Drunken Highlander, and this is our deck tech video for Pia's Robots, a low to the ground, artifact based mono red deck that mostly attacks with creatures, but also has a couple spicy infinite turns combos that can push it through in the late game. Pia's Robots is an artifact creature based aggro combo deck that plays artifacts that like to attack and don't care if they die with Pia's abilities. Pia herself can force bad blocks, buff creatures that get through, or act as a sack outlet, while the creatures in the deck are the ones that do the heavy lifting in regards to denting life totals. We can also generate a lot of, or even infinite turns using Nexus. No, no, not that Nexus. Ugin's Nexus, and a variety of other cards and combos. Either way, it is another way to close out the game if it goes too long, or if our fair creature beatdown plan becomes obsolete. This deck attempts to put the pressure on in the early game by resolving a bunch of cheap artifact creatures and attacking a lot. Since it doesn't matter if most of our creatures die, we can attack with impunity in the early game, not being held back by the fear of lethal blocks. In the instance there is some blocker who is too big to handle, we can use Pia's ability to get in there anyways. To help with this combat game plan, we give a good amount of Thopters who are particularly good with Pia's pseudo fire breathing. In addition to that, we have the ability to make bigger creatures that are going to be able to get in there when people can't block. We also have a suite of extra turn combos in order to help us in the late game. Yeah, you heard that right. Extra turn combos in mono red. Ugin's Nexus is a hell of a drug. This card is one of the main pieces of our deck and can help give our creatures the turns they need to deal some serious damage. We will go over its main utilizations in combos in order of complexity. Pia in Ugin's Nexus. This works with any sack outlet, but Pia is the one we have the most access to. Six mana to take an extra turn and eliminate a blocker ain't a bad rate. Mirror works in Ugin's Nexus is awkward, since Ugin's Nexus prevents Ugin's Nexus from working. But if you sack the original Nexus with the Mirror works token on the stack, you can get around it and get two extra turns. Prototype Portal, with Pia as a sack outlet, is infinite turns for six mana a turn as well, plus the initial four from Portal. Karn the Great Creator, Ugin's Nexus, Pia, and Contagion Engine can return the Nexus from Exile, sack it, and recast it for the low low price of 10 mana a turn. Karn's Bastion and Contagion class can also sub for the engine. Even with just Karn or one proliferate outlet, we can take more than one extra turn here. Turn the Nexus into a creature with either of our Karns, equipping Helm of the Host, and then going to combat and getting another Nexus, then using Erratic Portal to return the original Nexus to hand since, you know, Nexus stops Nexus, and then sacrificing the cloned Nexus with Pia. Infinite turns for 12 mana a turn. What a deal! We can also go infinite using Scrap Mastery loops. With Scrap Mastery, Codex Shredder, and a way to repeatedly produce enough mana to use them both through artifacts or sacrificing artifacts, we can loop any cards we want, including Karn and our Nexus, by recurring and recasting Shredder within these loops and using cards like Mirror Retriever. We can even mill everyone out with the Shredder if we can recur it, tap it, sack it, and then recur it again to sack and bring back the mastery. I've actually pulled this off once, and it's so ridiculously convoluted and silly that it, you're, it's satisfying. It's, it's just really satisfying. Lastly for the combos, we have Nim Death Mantle in here, which means there are some shenanigans with it in Kark Clan Ironworks. Mere Battlesphere can get infinite tokens and colorless mana, which we have some kinda bad but still relevant outlets for. And we have Cathodian to produce infinite colorless in the same way. I mostly use this mana to make sure nothing blocks me ever again, as this deck isn't trying to kill with infinite mana. Just turns, because it's so dang spicy. You may have noticed these combos have gotten increasingly ridiculous and convoluted. In this deck, it is unlikely you will get any of them off unless it's truly a very long game. This deck has a few tutors, and outside the Nexus itself, most of these cards aren't really worth tutoring for. Having a lot of layered combos increases the chance of one of them going off, but it is more likely you will find the win through combat damage or some other method first and just use these combo pieces for value. Even one extra turn off of Ugin's Nexus can be enough to seal a game. That's also why we didn't include other extra turns combos, since the pieces are largely bad on their own. There's one last thing. You know with Pia's abilities to get attackers through and buff artifact creatures, I couldn't resist slipping a little infect in there. Plague Mirror and Ink Moth Nexus are both good on their own, and we have many ways in the deck to buff them, as well as Contagion Engine to spread the plague further. 
This will show those pesky life gain decks. As for weaknesses, our deck is vulnerable to prison or overly defensive strategies, as well as removal heavy control decks that can put the hurt on our artifacts. Our draw engines are not that great, so having a defensive deck focus us down with removal can feel really bad. Lastly, although our removal is versatile and repeatable, there isn't a lot of it in the deck. We need to be careful with our removal and try not to play table police unless we're really in a bad spot. We don't have a lot of it, and playing the control game will make us run out of gas by the time we need to stop a potential win. Instead of pressuring board states, focus on pressuring the life totals of the players you anticipate will be able to beat you in the late game. It's best to do this with your 3 mana commander and low CMC artifact creatures while everyone else is still ramping. With this deck, you sometimes need to learn to take a few punches. Instead of pointing removal spells at people, just dome them for a few turns with artifact weenies. What are they gonna do? Block? These are the five groups of cards that I found important to showcase, listed in no particular order. Ugin's Nexus. This card is how a mono red creature swarm deck catches up with the rest of the board. If Karn still hasn't been cast, don't feel bad about slamming this down for value. A well-timed extra turn or two can win the game even without combos. Castle Embereth. For a land that mostly enters untapped, this little guy packs a wallop with the oodles of thopters we sometimes create. Also, most people forget it's even there. Contagion Engine. Not only does this work well with our Karn and other walkers, but it also works great with all the plus one plus one counters the deck makes incidentally, and can be used as removal against pesky opponents. Oh, also we have an effect, so you know. Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. With all our dudes, this thing gains us a surprising amount of life. It can really sustain us into the late game, or even put us ahead. Codex Shredder. This card does it all. If you don't already have one, get yourself a Codex Shredder. It can brick top deck tutors and scry. It messes with Sensei's Divining Top. It can fill our own grave for value. It only costs one mana to play, and most importantly of all, it is a colorless card that can return any, I'll repeat that, any card from our graveyard to our hand. With this, we could do bonkers shit like sacrifice everything to Clark Clan Ironworks and then recur it all with Scrap Mastery over and over and over over. Notable exclusions. Let's ignore the obvious budget upgrades. Also, Ashna's Altar, Impact Tremors, Perforos, and Phyrexian Altar were all excluded because I didn't want this to become a Nim Death Mantle deck centered around sacrificing Pia. That would be a much stronger and a lot more boring build that I think wouldn't even want Pia as the commander. Swords were also left out. Swords would be really cool in this deck, so would Batter Skull and Jitte. I think that might be taking things too far though. I tried to keep things toned down for this build and keep it firmly out of noob stopper territory. Swords are the type of cards that can leave players with less access to cards or cash a little salty and aren't really the direction I want to take this deck anyways. Lastly, 8 mana Big Daddy Ugin isn't in here because even though he's sweet, I didn't want to raise the price tag of this deck too much more. A more expensive and probably slightly stronger version of this deck could swap in most of these expensive equipment in place of all the ridiculous and probably bad infinite packages and the Ugin's Nexus. But where's the fun in that? Power level. This is a good pregon to casual level deck. It may have big scary infinites, but they are slow and cannot be reliably drawn or tutored. In reality, this deck is going to try to beat people down with creatures. That makes it a great deck for casual tables, but not one that will play up well in power against decks that are more focused. This is a perfect deck to slap down at the table with your friends and some drinks for some relaxing kitchen table games, or to pilot against pre-cons as a way to introduce new friends to magic. Overall, Pia's Robots is a wonky, creature-based pseudo-combo deck in mono red based around a creature most people forgot was even legendary. This deck is a great time to pilot and just as rewarding to play against, as long as your opponents learn to respect Ugin's Nexus. There are certainly other builds you can do with this as well, leaning harder into either the creature aggro side or even the combo side. Pia is versatile and surprisingly powerful in the command zone. She's just not the strongest or most conventional option. Thank you guys so much for watching. What underpowered or underused commanders do you want us to build around next? How would this deck function differently if it was Pia and Kieran as the commanders of the deck? As usual, if you want to find out more information about this build, you can find the deck list in the description. It includes a little write-up on some stuff that wasn't covered in the video, as well as budget considerations for any card over $10. Let us know what you think about this deck in the comments. 
And as usual, if you enjoyed our content, don't forget to share it with your friends, and as always, subscribe. Thanks for watching.